These are the three books that I messed up my book buying ban with. I may have slipped in this video and made a little mistake, but you know, what is a book buying ban without failing just a little bit, you know? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Sabine and welcome to another video. Now, I have been dreading to film this video for such a long time. I have, if I counted correctly, 43 books that I need to haul for this video and I'm not looking forward to filming for an hour and how much time is it gonna take to edit this? I don't know. <laughs> Before we're gonna get into this giant book haul, I wanna thank today's sponsor, which is Discovery. And please hear me out on this one because I think that this is an amazing opportunity to help people in need with your favorite hobby, which is reading. So Discovery and Room to Read have teamed up together and created a reading challenge, which will take place from June 1st. So it's already going on until June 30th. And the thing with this challenge is if you post a 200 word review on Discovery, Discovery will donate $5 to Room to read, which is a charity that aims to decrease illiteracy and gender inequality all over the world. That $5 donation can help so many people because with $1, they can buy one educational book, meaning that with every review that you post, you're contributing five books to young readers in low income communities. So let me talk a little bit about what Discovery is, how you can sign up and participate into the challenge. Discovery is a platform for readers, reviewers, and authors who are fans of indie books. They are dedicated to spotlighting indie books that don't really get featured into like the mainstream media because they believe that readers deserve to read the best books regardless of how they are published. I can hear you asking the question, but Sabine, how do I participate in this amazing challenge? Well, let me show you how to sign up to Discovery. So first you go to the Readsy Discovery website and you sign up with your account. You can find a book that you want to read either through the recommendations or by browsing on the website yourself. Perhaps you've actually already read a book and then you can search for it on their website and visit the reader review tab. If it's an external book not yet listed on Discovery, start by importing it to your library. Go to library and follow the steps to add book to your bookshelf. And after you've read a book, you write a review. That's literally how simple it is. Plus, you are actually contributing to a great cause. All of the information regarding the Discovery Room to Read June reading challenge will be in the description box down below. Please sign up using my personal link. I will be participating in the challenge myself by reading Conversations with Women. The reviews on it looked amazing. So thank you so much to Reedsy Discovery for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go on to the book haul, shall we? So I'm gonna try to keep it as short and quick as I possibly can. It's been six months since I uploaded my last book haul and I made kind of like a deal with myself that in 2021 I won't be buying any books with my own money. I can either get books if they are gifted to me or if I get a gift card and I buy them with the gift card. I may have slipped in this video and made a little mistake but you know what is a book buying ban without failing just a little bit? You know? <laughs> so let's just get right into the video, I guess. And I'm gonna start off with the most exciting thing of them all, which is my birthday book haul. On April 14th, I turned 22 and I had so many books that were gifted to me either by my friends or by my subscribers because I do have my like Amazon wish list in the description. So like you do not have to gift me any books, but if you want to give me books, my wish list is always in the description box down below. So let's just start off with the pile that I have the closest to me. And these are all of the books that I got from my Dutch booktuber friends. I'm just picking up these books in like a random order. I probably won't be giving any detailed synopsises for like all of them but if you want to like check out what they're about go have a look on goodreads on google whatever the first one that i have to haul is such a fun age by kylie reed i got gifted this oh the notes are falling out <laughs> i got gifted this book by michelle from books michelle also i believe all of the like booktubers bookstagrammers bookish influencers channels whatever in the description box down below so you can check them all out give them a follow support them as well there's a very short description on the back of this one it's like adult fiction I believe and it says when Amira is apprehended at a supermarket for kidnapping the white kid she's actually babysitting her employer Alex resolves to make things right so begins a crash course that will upend everything they think they know about themselves each other and the messy dynamics of privilege. I've heard nothing but great things about this one and I might do like a buddy read with Olivia from live for reading and I would be 
honored if she wants to buddy read this book with me. So thank you so much, Michelle. Then I think just like a week before my birthday, I went on a book shopping trip at Dolner, which is like one of the biggest bookstores here in the Netherlands. It's based in Rotterdam. And I went with my friend Leora from Books with Leo. She got me two books for my birthday there. And it was such a lovely day. We had an amazing day. We ate some pastries afterwards in the park. It was wonderful. So the first one that I have here is The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp. Sharpie? Not Sharpie, right? Like the pen. <laughs> the vibe that I got from it is that we follow a main character whose mother is actually a con artist and she's kind of like following her steps. It sounds so cool. Plus there is already a movie in development, which features Millie Bobby Brown. But I really like these kinds of stories and the chapters are also super short. It seems like a very fun, adventurous read. And then the second book that Leora got me is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. Yes, I want to try and familiarize myself with Robin Hobb's work and that is all the fault of Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction. She raves about Robin Hobb's fantasy all the time. Um, this is a chunky boy. <laughs> I believe this one is almost 900 pages and you know who is intimidated by big books? Yes, me. <laughs> but I do love pirate stories and this is a pirate adventure one. It sounds very complicated. I believe people have to like inherit ships and after a couple of generations the ships come to life and Ashley has been raving about this series. I don't know if I'm reading it in the right order if I start my like Robin Hobb experience with this one. If you've read some of her works please let me know in the comments down below. But this seems like the perfect book to kind of lose yourself into because it's also so huge. <laughs> then from Bit bit <laughs> Then from Brit from Basically Brit, who is a very good friend of mine as well, I got House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. Everyone and their mama has been talking about this book. It seems like it is a horror murder mystery? That's with a very big question mark. I don't know if there's like a murder involved in this book. It says that the Hollow sisters disappeared as children only to reappear a month later with no memory of what had happened to them. Odd eerie occurrences follow in their wake. And then one of the sisters goes missing again. The other two are looking for her, but there are other people, question mark, looking for the eldest sister as well. I'm gonna buddy read this together with Lexi from Alexandra Roslin this month. I am so excited. It's also super thin and I've heard it's creepy and weird and I'm just intrigued. And then from Leonie from the book Leo, I got two middle grade books. One of them I've actually already read. I talked about it in my May wrap up. And that book is The Girl and the Ghost by Hannah Alkoff. I believe you could classify this middle grade as like a horror slash paranormal one. And it's inspired by Malaysian folklore regarding Pelisids? Pelisids? They're like ghosts. The ghost in this story is kind of like attached to our main character and Pelisids can also become very dangerous and they have a dark side to them. So it really explores the relationship and it is very dark, much darker than I even expected it to be. But this would be a perfect read during Halloween. And then the second book that I got from Leonie is Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger and I don't know too much about this one, but I've seen it going around everywhere. I don't know if it's a finished series yet, but there are nine books in total. So hopefully I will like it because then I can become invested in another bookish series again. And I believe if I flip through it, this story actually has like notes inside of the book, which I think is so cool. That's gonna be like a whole other reading experience. Don't know what this is about? So you should look it up. <laughs> Wait, okay, so the actual like last book that I received from my Dutch booktube friends is Pages and Co, Tilly and the Book Wanderers. This is the first book in a middle grade series and I got gifted this one by Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe and Olivia is currently living in the Netherlands as well. But unfortunately, she will probably leave for the UK again this year. So that's such a shame. But we buddy read the Nevermore series until book three because book four isn't out yet, but we got some news on that. So that's so exciting. We loved buddy reading and like hosting a read along for that series and we really want to read more middle grade together. So I believe Olivia has this one as well and I think it's always great to have an excuse to buddy read a book with your friend. So on to the next pile of gifts that I received from my booktube book community friends. You are all so lovely. Oh my god, you don't know how excited I was when I saw that Shanice got me this one because I desperately wanted it. This is the third and final book 
book in a trilogy that I just need to finish this year and that is What's a Girl Gotta Do by Holly Bourne. If you've been on my channel for a little while you know that I am loving the Spinster Club. Yeah, the Spinster Club trilogy by her. The first one is Am I Normal Yet? And the second one is How Hard Can Love Be? And in this companion novel trilogy you follow three best friends. They have like a feminist club which they call the Spinster Club and they all deal with their own personal problems. In book one it tackles OCD. In book two I guess you could say it covers alcoholism and in book three I don't know what it is about but I do believe it focuses on Lottie and she has like a YouTube channel as well which you rarely read about in books but more people need to read her books and I'm so excited and thankful that Shanice gifted this one to me which was perfect because I needed to get this story. Wait Shanice is also Dutch. Why didn't I think of that? Okay I'm just gonna pick the books and just get along with it. Next up I have Slay by Brittany Morris and I got gifted this one from Kate and oh my god how excited I am to pick up this gamer YA novel. I love books that feature gaming stories. By day 17 year old Kira Johnson is a college student and one of the only black kids at Jefferson Academy. By night she joins hundreds of thousands of black gamers who duel worldside in the secret online VR game Slay. No one knows Kira is the game developer not even her boyfriend Malcolm. Ooh, we love a girl who is a game developer. So cool. But when a teenager is murdered over a dispute in the slay world, the media labels it an exclusionist racist hub for thugs. With threats coming from both inside and outside the game, Kira must fight to save the safe space she's created. But can she protect slay without losing herself? So I'm very curious to see how the themes of like racism and then gaming, how it's combined and talked about in this game. And I really want to get my hands on more gamer books. If you have any recommendations, let me know in the comments down below. When I put this book on my wish list, I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I was secretly hoping that Megan from Meg with Books would gift it to me, and she did. It is The Strange Case of the Alchemist's Daughter by Theodora Goss. Meg always raves about this book and it seems like so much fun and unlike anything I've ever heard before. I believe it's like a fantasy or historical fiction, maybe even kind of both. This book involves investigations regarding murder. You also have the help of Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson and I believe the characters that we follow in this book are kind of like offspring of fantastical figures in literature like Frankenstein and other figures like that. I don't know exactly, but it sounds so cool. And I'm so glad that Meg gifted this to me. So I'm really hoping I'm gonna like it now because if I won't, perhaps Meg doesn't want to be friends with me anymore. So let's hope that's not the case. Another middle grade, which is The Forest of Moon and Sword by Amy Raphael. When I heard Jodi from Vanilla Moon talk about this in one of her most anticipated releases of 2021, I just had to get it. Art loves only three things in life, her mother, her horse, and her sword. So when her mother is taken, one cloudless night, accused of witchcraft, Art mounts her horse and chases after her. As she journeys through the wild forests of Scotland and England, she will use her mother's herbal recipe book and natural magic to guide her. But will she spot the signs from the omens? Can she reach her mother in time? So it feels like a magical family story and I believe it takes place around like the middle ages. Not too sure, but it sounds very exciting and I wanna read more middle grade, so. Thank you so much, Jody. Then I've actually already read this book and Karis from Karis's Corner got this for my birthday. Thank you so much, Karis. It is me and my dad at the dead dad. <laughs> this is the struggle of English not being your first language. Me, my dad at the end of the rainbow by Benjamin Dean. I actually put this on my wish list because Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin was raving about this middle grade LGBTQ plus book. Our main character Archie is really like struggling and his family as well. His parents are like divorced and they're fighting a lot. Archie really wants his family to be happy again but when a flyer falls out of his dad's backpack he might know why everything is kind of chaotic right now. It was fun, it was emotional, and overall a great middle grade. For my very close friends from high school, I received Heartstopper Volume 4 by Alice Oseman. Thank you so much, Evelyn and Renata, for gifting this to me. I just read it in a recent reading vlog that I uploaded in which I tried to read 150 pages a day 
for a week. It was one of my most anticipated releases and it didn't let me down. This is an LGBTQ graphic novel series that you absolutely need to check out if you haven't already. Next up, I have three books <laughs> that Tiana got me. Tiana has an amazing bookstagram, an amazing booktube. Please go check her out. I don't know why she wanted to give me three books. I am extremely thankful for it, but she didn't have to do it. These are all some of her favorite books, so they better live up to the hype for me because I don't know if she will still like me if I don't like them. <laughs> so she gifted me Jade City by Fonda Lee and she loved it. Like on her Instagram, she was like sobbing over the ending of it and I'm very intrigued. Jade is the lifeblood of the city of Jaloon, a stone that enhances a warrior's natural strength and speed. It is mined, traded, stolen, and killed for, all controlled by two families equal in their power and ruthlessness. When a modern drug emerges that allows anyone, even foreigners, to wield Jade, simmering tension between the two clans erupt into open war. So it's very much like a fantasy family drama? Family drama? family imperium that are like fighting against each other. I think this is going to be a fantastic read. I hope I will be falling in love with the characters. I kind of hope that they will break my heart because I love feeling emotions and pain. <laughs> apparently. I believe it's a trilogy as well, an adult fantasy trilogy. Next up, she got me two books from one of the most hyped series of this year, I think, which is From Blood and Ash and Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. These books are heavy, so heavy, and I believe they're around six to seven hundred pages long. These lie a little bit outside of my comfort zone because they are adult fantasy books, but they are very, like, heavy with romance. It's a romance heavy book. So it's either really gonna be like a hit or miss for me. Sometimes I can feel a bit like cringy when it comes to fantasy romance novels, but I think it's gonna be a really nice experience to see how I feel about this series. So I'm gonna hope that I will like these just as much as a lot of you guys do. Okay, and then the last four books that I have were all gifted to me from Alexandra Roslin and Lexi is way too kind and we've become such good friends. I love you so much, Lexi. Thank you, you absolutely did not have to get me all of these books. So let's start off with the one that I'm currently reading, which is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. This is an adult fantasy and it talks about our main character Linus Baker. He is a caseworker for the department in charge of magical youth and he checks in with all these kids that live in these orphanages and sees if everything is still going well. Now he is given the task, a very secret, highly classified one, and he has to travel to a very distant island which has six orphaned children there with magical abilities who might actually Again, how did they phrase this? <laughs> Bring about the end of days. And Linus learns so much about himself, about the children, and also about the caretaker of these children on this island. I'm halfway through. My thoughts and opinions will be shared in a secret TBR video that I'm doing with Lexi. So excited for that. She also gifted me two of her other favorite books as well because she loves the house in the Cerulean Sea. The other two are Summer of Salt by Katrina Leno. I'm scared to pick this one up because it feels very much outside of my comfort zone. I believe it involves a lot of magical realism and it has quite slow writing and Lexi analyzed kind of like my reading taste and she told me that I really like fast paced books. So she's also curious to see and hear my thoughts and opinions about this one. The third book that she got me is actually an old booktube favorite and I've heard so many great things about it but Lexi definitely gave me the push in the back that I needed to put this one on my wish list and that is I'll Give You the Sun by Jandy Nelson. I believe this is a contemporary story which involves two twins. Jude and her twin Noah are close until a tragedy tragedy <laughs> drives them apart. Now they are barely speaking and both falling for boys they can't have. Lexi always raves about this one and it makes me feel so interested in the story. Plus it's like an old book dupe fave. So the quicker that I get it off of my bucket list, my reading list, the more satisfied I will feel to have finally picked it up. And hopefully I love it. And lastly, but definitely not least, she got me Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I am so excited. Okay, I'm excited about all these books, obviously, but this is an Arthurian legend fantasy story, dark academia, dare I say. It has a very, very long description, so <laughs> I won't be talking about that in this video. I just love the cover and I'm so in the mood to read another fantasy again, so. <sighs> when will I get to it? I don't know. Hopefully soon. We shall see. <laughs> That's probably what I think with all of these books. And then lastly, I have three books that I also got for my birthday. Actually, I'm classifying it 
for my birthday, but two of these were actually sent to me very randomly. But all three of these books came from you guys, my subscribers, which I find just mind blowing because you don't know me personally, but still you want to send me books, which I am forever grateful for. First of all, we have Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. Yadriel has summoned a ghost and now he can't get rid of him. When his traditional Latinx family has problems accepting his gender, Yadriel becomes determined to prove himself a real brujo. With the help of his cousin and best friend Maritza, he performs the Quinces trial himself and then sets out to find the ghost of his murdered cousin Miguel and set it fire. Oh, and set it free. <laughs> set it on fire? <laughs> However, the ghost he summons is actually Julian Diaz, the school's resident bad boy, and Julian is not about to go quietly into death. He is determined to find out what happened and tie up some loose ends before he leaves. Left with no choice, Yadriel agrees to help Julian so that they can both get what they want. But the longer Yadriel spends with Julian, the less he wants to let him leave. I feel like it's gonna be a super interesting story also talking about like your gender identity and then exploring like family relationships after coming out as transgender, which can definitely be, and I think it will be for Yadriel, a very difficult topic. Have not seen a negative review for this one. And thank you so much to Adriana for gifting me this book. You didn't have to. I'm not even halfway through this book haul. Oh my god, how? Then I have The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is a fun story. I actually had the hardcover of this one, but then I kind of like sold it on eBay because it was worth quite a lot of money and I didn't have the other two books in hardcover and I just want a matching set. So I unhauled it and then someone got me the paperback off of my wish list. The little blurb here on the back says, in the markets of 18th century Cairo, Thieves, tricksters, con artists, and outcasts eke out a living swindling rich nobles and foreign invaders alike. The third book came out this year or at the end of last year and everyone is raving about this. They were so emotional. It's very intense and an adult fantasy that I'm looking forward to picking up very much. And a big thank you to Jordan for getting this one. I don't think it was gifted to me necessarily for my birthday, but like random gifts make me extremely happy as well. So thank you so much, Jordan. And then the last one that I received from you guys for my birthday. I believe that this one is again like a random gift from a subscriber. So thank you so much Tamar for gifting me Wild Spark by Vashti Hardy. Another gorgeous middle grade book. Crew Haywood is on a mission, getting the ghost machines of Metlock to remember the people they used to be. She needs to find her brother, Francis. If she fails, her brother will stay dead. And if she succeeds, all of society may fall apart. The cover was beautiful, the story seemed awesome, and the ratings were very high. Those were the books that I got for my birthday. I don't know how long this video will be. Now let's go on to some random book shopping that I did by myself. <laughs> which was sent to me by the publisher Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Thank you so much to Penguin for sending this over to me. I read it. I loved it. Really liked it. And I even made a separate reading vlog for it. This is a highly anticipated new release. I think is perfect for the summer. It deals with siblings trying to figure out where your own boundaries are, especially regarding family and abandonment. It's an intense story, but a really, really great one. Then I actually did a campaign for Bruna, which is kind of like a book stationery shop here in the Netherlands. And I got to pick out some books for that campaign. And this is the first Dutch book in a long time that I bought for myself, which which is called The Meeste Mensen Deugen by Rutger Brechtman. This one is actually translated into English as well. This is the cover. We as a society always see humans as like egocentric or mean or just rude in general, not nice, but this book actually kind of like shines the light on humanity in a different form. How actually mankind can be very wonderful and super nice. I think sometimes we need to be reminded of the fact that humans can be nice beings as well. It sounds very vague, but okay. It has gotten raving reviews. I actually think it's so cool that like a Dutch book has been translated into English. Maybe you've heard of the book yourself. I also picked up at Bruna, City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. This is like the tiniest book perhaps in this haul. When I saw on Goodreads, when I looked this title up, that this is perfect for fans of Evelyn Husband, Evelyn, what? Of the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Then you absolutely need to pick this one up. This is a historical adult fiction book, I believe, and it takes place from the 1940s on. When I posted on my Instagram that I bought this, everyone was like, this is such a good book and more people need to read it. I think I might do that this summer because it seems 
perfect. I mean, you only need to tell me that like, if you like Evelyn Hugo, you need to pick up this book, then I will absolutely do that. And then I also picked up a book that I've never heard anyone talk about, which is Dominicana by Angie Cruz. I'm pretty sure it's an adult historical fiction as well. I think it deals a lot with immigration and moving to America because the first line of the synopsis is because the first sentence of the synopsis is 15 year old Ana Cancion never dreamed of moving to America the way the girl she grew up with in the Dominican countryside did. I might be doing a video on that as well, like reading unknown books or reading books I never hear anyone talk about because this one intrigues me a lot. For my birthday, actually, I also got a gift card from my sister and her boyfriend to go book shopping at Lattes and Literature, which is one of my favorite bookstores here in the Netherlands. It's also very close to my hometown. So when I was there, of course, I had to like splurge out a little bit with buying books. So first of all, I have One of Us is Next by Karen M. McManus. I read One of Us is Lying back in March or April and I was pleasantly surprised by that YA murder mystery story and then a lot of you guys commented that this sequel is actually really good, maybe even better. So when I saw it in the bookstore and it has gorgeous blue spray pages, I was like, you are going home with me if you want it or not. And with this YA murder mystery, it focuses on like the same high school. I don't think the same characters, but it involves a game of truth or dare gone wrong. So let's see how wrong it will go. <laughs> Mel from Mel Reads also reads amazing middle grade stories. And when I saw this book mentioned on her booktube channel, I was like, okay, that's gonna go on my wish list. I really wanna get this. And that is The Mystery of Black Hollow Lane by Julia Noble. And what I got from it is that this is a middle grade dark academia. I still need to read more dark academia books, but you rarely see or hear about dark academia in middle grade. Hence why I wanted to pick this one up. That's all that I needed to know about it. And then the last book that I bought at Lattes and Literature is just a stunning one. I know that this book is like relatively old here in the book community, but the covers have recently been like revamped. Can I say it like that? I think I can. So this is Graceling by Kristen Kishore, and it's a YA fantasy in right now, I think a quartet. I'm unsure about that. Again, long synopsis. So I won't really be talking about it with you guys in this video, but look at that stunning cover. Like this was the original one, not too bad, but when you compare it to this, I mean, there's no chance. <laughs> a couple of months back, I did like a collaboration video with the Dutch Royal Library and I got to buy some books from that campaign. I've actually read three out of the four books that I bought already, so I'm just gonna quickly mention them. The first one is With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. I also did a buddy read with Mel from Mel Reads for this one. And this is her only work in prose. Normally, like she writes poetry-ish style. How'd you call that? In verse. Our main character is really passionate about cooking She's also a teen mom, so it really explores the themes of choosing to do things for yourself and following your passions whilst also having the responsibilities of having a child. Very inspiring. Loved seeing the cooking in this one. Just a great novel in my opinion. Then I have Felix Ever After by Case and Calendar. I literally just finished this book. It is a YA contemporary which explores themes such as mostly gender identity but also sexuality. Felix, our main character, has never been in love and when someone outs him at this summer school for being transgender he kind of tries to come up with a plan for revenge but it leads to him getting involved in like a love triangle and I definitely liked this one as well. A new favorite of mine is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. It's an amazing historical adult fiction about two twin sisters who grew up in this southern black community in a town called Mellard. When they were 16, they kind of like, how'd you call that? Like fled the town and no one really heard of them ever again. Eventually they kind of got separated and one of the sisters went on her life as a white woman and the other sister went on as a black woman and their stories intertwine through their daughters and it's so interesting. It's very beautiful, it's heartbreaking, and one that everyone needs to read, in my opinion. And then the last one of that little section of this book haul, I have The Mercies by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. This is also historical fiction, I believe. It says it is inspired by the real events of the Vardo Storm and the 1621 Witch Trials. The Mercies is a story about how suspicion can twist its way through a community and a love that may prove as dangerous as it is powerful. And I heard so many great things about the Mercies, which intrigued me a lot, especially since it's like a feminist historical fiction about witches and like society back in the 1600s. 
these are the three books that I messed up my book buying ban with. So many of my friends were mentioning these books on Instagram and I was just like, oh my God, I absolutely have to get them. Based on the fact that I have probably over 150 books on my physical TBR, I do not need them. So here we have We Hunt the Flame by Hafsa Faisal. I'm probably butchering this author's name. I'm so sorry. What I got a little bit from the synopsis is that we have a hunter and an assassin. I think their stories will intertwine. I think it's going to be so much fun. I believe there is a little bit of romance in here as well. And Orchid's Library on Instagram, she definitely inspired me to finally pick this one up. Next up, we have two books which are very different and deal with some very intense topics, especially I think rape is kind of like the overarching theme, if I can say it like that. We have my my Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. I picked this one up because Lexi and I were talking about it and she told me what a beautiful, heartbreaking, devastating story this was. That even publishers were kind of like fighting over who was gonna publish this debut novel, which sounds very, very promising. Vanessa Y was 15 years old when she first had sex with her English teacher. So it explores like the teacher student theme, which I have seen sometimes in other books as well, but hopefully this one will execute that a little bit better. Now the teacher Jacob Strain has been accused of sexual abuse by another former student and a journalist has asked Vanessa to contribute to a story about him. But no one seems to understand that what Vanessa and Strain had together wasn't abuse it was love. So this one will definitely explore that line of love versus abuse and perhaps how difficult it is to talk about it. And also maybe this is gonna happen, I don't know, that our main character will kind of see their relationship in a different light as she did when she was 15. Those are kind of my, how do you call that, my expectations or my predictions for this story. And then when I saw Kayla from Books and Lala talk about this and many other people as well, I was like, okay, I think this is going to be a super impactful read and that is The Mirror Season by Anna Marie McLemore. I don't know if this author's work is their like debut novel as well. Rochelle Cristales? Cristales? Okay that's a very difficult thing to pronounce. Whole world changes after she and a boy she barely knows are assaulted at the same party. So it definitely deals with like sexual assault which is a super difficult theme to read about and talk about but I've heard overall great things about this book and how it is being dealt with so I'm super curious to pick this one up as well. Okay, the last seven books that I want to talk about are books that I received in my Fairy Loot and Owl Cray boxes. If you didn't know already, I am a rep for both of those bookish boxes. And let's just quickly get through them all. The thing is, I don't know which book corresponds with which month, but I'm just going to start off with the first one that is on top, which is This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. I'm not even going to try from which month it was, but it's a Fairy Loot special edition, a little bit different from what they usually feature in their boxes. They are very, very focused on fantasy like most of the times they feature fantasy books but this one I believe also has a sci-fi element in it with lots of LGBTQ plus identifying characters. I will show you the exclusive edition of it like oh, they have been doing a lot of do you call this embroidered or like just foiled printings on the covers and we have a stunning dust jacket. I believe this was the fairy loot book for December, I think, and that is Master of One by Jada Jones and Denny Bennett. This is a fey heist story fantasy book. Absolutely sounds amazing. It has red sprayed pages with glitter on it. I believe the end papers are also specifically made for fairy loot. Again, foiling on the hardcover and we have some gorgeous art inside of the dust jacket as well. Like, look at that giant lizard. That looks so cool. The January book, I'm pretty sure, for Fairy Loot was Lore by Alexandra Bracken. This is a story which can kind of be described as Hunger Games meets Greek mythology, if I'm correct. I think I've heard a lot of great things about it. It has snakes on the spine, gorgeous foiling as well of Medusa. I'm not really familiar in Greek mythology. Maybe I want to read this on vacation, but because I do love some action-packed books and I I think this one will be just that. In March, we received The Bright and the Pill, which is something that I don't feel like reading right now because it's so hot here in the Netherlands. And this is more of like a wintry book. It takes place, I believe, in the mountains and it is a fantasy novel. And then their most recently featured book in one of their boxes, this was for the April one. I believe they have a couple of delays with their boxes recently, so I haven't received my May box yet. But this one is The Prison Healer 
by Lionette Noni. The cover is gorgeous and I think this is gonna be a fantastic YA fantasy book. I believe it involves one of the characters being in prison and like a magical battle. I have no clue but look at this foiled hardcover. I think when they do character art on the hardcover it's mind-blowingly stunning and I kind of got like secret garden vibes from this one as well. I even think the sequel for this book is coming out in 2021 too. I hope it's going to be a duology because then I can binge read those two books back to back. Yes, I think you phrase it like that. <laughs> now on to the two books that I received in my Owl Crate boxes. If you want to get like an Owl Crate subscription for yourself, you can use this code. Oops, hitting my bookshelves, you can use my code and you will get 10% off of your subscription, I believe. But in our April box, we received Witches Steeped in Gold by CNN Smart. This one is so hyped. Oh my God, especially Owl Crate has some super hyped books in their boxes, which I'm so excited about because I really wanted to buy them myself already. So that's great because I'm getting these boxes in exchange for an honest review. And I believe that this is like a Jamaican inspired fantasy book. I don't know if it takes place in Jamaica or if it's kind of like inspired by their culture but especially Joel from Fictional Fates because he received like an arc of this book. He was raving about this book. He was freaking out and he made me feel so hyped for it as well. The Owl Crate exclusive cover is gray instead of dark green. With all these like special edition books they're all signed by the authors themselves which I think is so cool. It has a little tree on the front cover as well and just as fairy loot I believe they do this most of the times they have like fan art or like character art inside of the dust jacket as well finally <laughs> the last bug that I will be talking about in this video is definitely not the least this has been hyped up so much as well and that is the ones we're meant to find especially because this cover is one of the prettiest ones that I've seen in a while so beautiful. The Owl Crate exclusive one has kind of like pink and purplish skies, clouds, instead of the more green, gray, blue ones, which makes it feel so dreamy. This is, I'm pretty sure, a sci-fi book, which definitely involves the environment and like the ecosystem as well, and two sisters trying to find each other. It sounds unlike anything I've heard of before, and this one doesn't have like character art, but it has a nice foiling on the hardcover. I don't know what to expect of this one, but I think it's gonna be so cool. Cool. Okay, if you have reached the end, please comment this emoji <laughs> because you are diehards. Like, if you've made it until the end of this book haul, love you all so much. A big praise to you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking somewhere here on the screen or in the button down below. Again, thank you so much for watching, and hopefully, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!